Hi! Welcome to iEducator. This is Teacher Jeff. I'm an educator and an engineer by profession. And today, we will discuss how to create a statement of the problem. But before doing that, let us discuss first the basics of statement of the problem. So what is meant by statement of the problem then? If it's a statement of the problem, it is an intellectual stimulus that calls for an organized response in the form of scientific inquiry and should express or and should express a relationship between two or more variables. So what is meant by a variable then? If it's a variable, it is any property or characteristics of some event, object, or perhaps person that may have different, uh, different values at different times depending on the condition. So examples of variables may be age, we have the height of a certain person or a certain building. We also have what we call the academic performance. We have reaction time and drug doses. So these are just some of the many examples of variables. So if we speak about statement of the problem, we have to bear in mind that this is divided into two parts. First, we have the general statement of the problem or the main objective. And we also have the specific statement of the problem or the specific objective. Now, let us discuss them one by one for better understanding. And let's start uh, with general statement of the problem. Okay, like I said earlier, there are two parts of the statement of the problem. As you can see, we have the general statement of the problem or our main objective. And second, we have the specific statement of the problem or specific objective. So what is the difference between the two? If we say general statement of the problem or main objective, it provides the focus of research express in terms of declarative form or declarative sentence. On the other hand, if we see specific objective, these are statements that will address the realization of the research objective. And this is expressed in the terms of interrogative form. So how do we create the general statement of the problem then? What are its inclusions? Well, the general problem should contain the following. First, we have the purpose of the study. Second, we have the respondents. Third, we have the environment and its general address. Fourth, we have the time frame. And finally, we have the output. On the other hand, the specific statement of the problem should contain uh, first, the profile of our respondents. Second, the assessment of independent variable. Third, the assessment of dependent variable. Fourth, we have the hypothesis testing on the relationship of the variables or significant difference of the measured variable based on groups. And finally, we have the output of the study. Before creating the general and specific statement of the problem, it is of paramount importance that we understand first the difference between independent and dependent variables. So the difference between independent and dependent variable is that if we say independent variable, this refers to the cause, meaning in an experiment, this is the variable that is manipulated or controlled by the investigator. So meaning to say, in most experiments, the investigator is interested in determining the effect that one variable has on one or more other variables. In other words, in most experiments, the investigator is interested in determining the effect that one variable has on one or more other variables. And the investigator manipulates the levels of a variable and measures the effect to the other variable. So the variable which is controlled and manipulated is called the independent variable because its levels are controlled by the experimenter and independent of any change in other variables. On the other hand, if we say dependent variable, 
This refers to the effect, meaning in an experiment, it is the variable that the investigator measures to determine the effect of the independent variable. So in simple words, dependent variable is being measured. In order for us to better understand the difference between independent and dependent variables, let me give you examples. For example, do tomatoes grow faster under fluorescent, incandescent, or natural light? So our independent variable is the type of light the tomato plant is grown under. Take note that our type of lights here, we have the fluorescent, incandescent, or natural light. On the other hand, our dependent variable is the rate of growth of that tomato plant. So which of these three types of lights would allow a faster rate growth of tomato plant? Okay, now second example, what is the effect of diet and regular soda on blood sugar levels? So our independent variable is the type of soda you drink, either diet or regular. And your dependent variable or your effect, okay? So the type of soda you drink is the cause. And what is the effect on that to your blood sugar level? Is it high or low? Okay. And finally, how does phone use before bedtime affect sleep? So clearly, our independent variable is the amount of phone use before bed, okay? So meaning to say how long you make use of your mobile phones or mobile device before you go to bed and your dependent variable refers to the number of hours sleep. These are the effects. So you have less number of hours of sleep, maybe, if you have longer usage of your mobile phone before bed and the quality of sleep as well. All right, now that we have understood the basics of the statement of the problem, uh, let us apply these basic characteristics or the basic principles of statement of the problem. So we will now create a statement of the problem. Now that we have understood the basics of statement of the problem, especially the rules on how to create the general and specific statement of the problems, um, it is now time for us to apply our learning. So at this point, let me provide you a sample research title. And as you can see, our sample research title says, The Impact of Parental Involvement Towards the literacy and numeracy skills of the kindergarten learners. So I'll give you a minute to think which of these is our um, independent variable and which of these is our uh, dependent variables. All right, so I'm sure that you already have in your mind um, what would be the possible independent variable and what would be our dependent variable. So in this case, uh, based on our sample research title, our independent variable is the parental involvement. Why parental involvement? Because this serves as our cause, okay? Because we will be asking ourselves, to what extent are the involvement of our parents towards the literacy and numeracy skills of the kindergarten learners? So therefore, our dependent variables, that would be the literacy skills and the numeracy skills of kindergarten learners. So, for example, parental involvement is our independent variable since this is the cause okay so how involved are the parents towards the literacy and numeracy skills of their children okay or their kids so do they have high involvement or do they have low involvement and if they have high or low involvement then what would be the effect on that towards the literacy and numeracy skills of their kids, okay? So these are the independent and dependent variables of our sample research title. So it is of paramount importance that the dependent and independent variables of your study 
are properly identified. And so for that matter, it would be easier for you to be able to uh, create your statement of the problem. So at this point, since we have properly identified our independent and dependent variables, we are now able to generate our general statement of the problem. As you can see, this is an example of our statement of the problem. So you have there the problem, okay, written in all caps and in bold, followed by statement of the problem. So that would be in bold form as well. So our, uh, you have to take note that different uh, universities or institutions have different rulings on how to create their statement of the problem. For example, if we speak about Mapua University, their general statement of the problem starts with the main objective of this study is to... So normally, that is how they start their statement of the problem in Mapua University. In other state universities such as... Um, let's say Cebu Technological University, they make use of this research will assess or this research will evaluate, okay? And other universities as well make use of the aim of this research is to and so on and so forth. So in this case, uh, we will be starting our statement of the problem by saying this research will assess or this research will evaluate. So... As you can see, this is our general statement of the problem. And as you learned earlier, our general statement of the problem should be expressed in terms of a declarative form. Okay, so we will start with this research will assess. Okay, so you have there this research will assess. And after that, you have to enter the title of your study. So the title of our study is, okay, enter the title of the study. So in this case, we have the impact of parental involvement towards the literacy and numeracy skills of the kindergarten learners, okay? This is our title, uh, title of our research. So we have there, this research will assess the impact of parental involvement towards the literacy and numeracy skills of the kindergarten learners at ABC University for the school year 2018-2019 as a basis for a proposed literacy and numeracy skills enhancement plan. Now, going back to the general uh, statement of the problem, take note that our general statement of the problem should contain the purpose of the study. So, in this case, the purpose of our study, um, that would be to assess the impact of parental involvement towards the literacy and numeracy skills of the kindergarten learners, okay? So that is the purpose of our study. And second, our general statement of the problem should contain the respondent. So in this case, as you can notice, our respondents are the kindergarten learners and the parents as well right and third we have it should also contain environment and its general address so as you can see in our uh, sample general statement of the problem okay the environment and the general address that would be the abc university okay and fourth we have the time frame so in this case based on our general statement of the problem our time frame is during the school year 2018 and 2019 and finally it should contain the output of our study enhancement as you can see the output of our study is a proposed literacy and numeracy skills enhancement plan so that is our goal we will create an enhancement plan 
to enhance or to augment the literacy and numeracy skills of the kindergarten learners. Now that we have finally created our general statement of the problem, now let's move on to the specific statement of the problem. Remember, as I said earlier, the specific problem should contain the following. First, we have the profile of the respondents. So in this case, our first uh, specific question should be about profiling of our respondents. And so for that matter, uh, we will now uh, move on to the creation of our first question. So in this case, we have, so we should state specifically it seeks answers to the following queries. So like I said earlier, our first question should be about a uh, profile of the respondents. And so for that matter, we will start by asking, what is the profile of the learners in terms of first um, gender and age? Do gender and age have direct bearing to the numeracy and literacy skills of our learners? Second, the parents' highest educational attainment. Okay. If the parents are highly educated, would that necessarily mean that they would have to devote their time and that they would have high involvement towards the literacy skills and numeracy skills of the students? On the other hand, if the parents are not highly educated, would that also necessarily mean that uh, they will not have that much of time to devote towards the literacy and numeracy skills of their uh, kids. And also we have the parents' occupation and combined family monthly income. Again, so as you can notice, you have there what is the profile of the learners in terms of, so you make use of colon, right? And then you enumerated all the possible profiles of your respondents. So in the second to the last, uh, you should have semicolon and then the word and. And your question mark should be at the end of the last profile, okay? Now, the second inclusion of the specific statement of the problem, that would be the assessment of the independent variable. Take note that our independent variable is the parental involvement. And so for that matter, in our second question, we will need to assess our parental involvement variable. So how do we assess the independent variable then? So we will assess our independent variable, a parental involvement, by asking, as perceived by the parent respondents, what is the extent of their involvement towards the school activities of their child? So in this case, we are able to assess their extent of involvement and take note that our um, extent involvement is our parents' respondents and this is our independent variable. And third, after assessing the independent variable, we are now able to assess the dependent variable and take note, our dependent variables in our study, that would be the literacy skills and numeracy skills of our kindergarten learners. So in assessing the dependent variable, we will do it by asking what is the level of literacy and numeracy skills of the learners. Again, level of literacy and numeracy skills. These are our dependent variables and we just assess our dependent variables by asking what is the level of literacy and numeracy skills of the learners. And fourth, we have hypothesis testing on the relationship of the variables for relationship only or significant difference on the measured variable based on group. So how do we do that? Now in doing so, we will do by asking, is there a significant relationship between the parental involvement and the literacy skills? 
Is there a significant relationship between the parental involvement and the numeracy skills of the learners? Okay, so if you can notice, um, in our question, we have there the independent variable. And for the bullets, we have there the dependent variables. We have the literacy skills, a semicolon, and numeracy skills of the learners. Question mark. All right, and finally, we have the output of our study. So in output of our study, we will ask the question, based on the findings of the study, what numeracy and literacy skills enhancement plan can be crafted? Take note that our goal is to create an enhancement plan to augment the numeracy and literacy skills of our learners. All right, so that is how we create our general and specific statements of our problem.